In this video, we're going to discuss the technique of source transformation. Let's say we have a voltage source that is in series with an impedance. This uh, series combination uh, can be found in, uh, may be found in any part of the circuit uh, that is part of a large circuit. Uh, the voltage could be an independent or a dependent voltage. According to source transformation, this combination can be transformed into a current source that looks like this. So we have a current source that is in parallel with an impedance. Now this current source can be found by simply dividing this voltage source by the impedance that is in series with it while this parallel impedance is uh, found by simply copying this impedance here. Similarly, uh, let's say you have a current source, so it may be a, uh, a independent or dependent current source that is in parallel with an impedance. This uh, combination can uh, also be transformed into a voltage source that looks like that where this voltage source is found by multiplying the current source and the impedance on the original circuit and this impedance is found by simply copying this impedance there Therefore, we can say that in a network, any voltage source that is in series with an impedance can be converted into a current source that is in parallel with an impedance. And the reverse is true for a current source that is in parallel with an impedance that can be converted also into a voltage source that is in series with an impedance. The objective of transformation a source from one form to the other is to simplify the circuit especially circuits that contain several loops until the circuit becomes a very simple circuit preferably a circuit that has only one loop where we can apply a simple Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law or a uh, Ohm's law to solve uh, the parameters that we want to uh, get. In our transformation process, we need to be careful in the uh, polarity of the voltage or the direction of the current. So for example, if we are trying to transform a voltage source into a current source, Take note that uh, the current source here is directed towards terminal A. Why is that so? So the guide here is uh, to look at the polarity of the voltage on the original circuit. Here we have the plus sign is uh, connected to terminal A through uh, the impedance Z sub S. When uh, that is the case, uh, we need to direct the flow of current towards terminal A. Likewise, or conversely, if the current, so if we try to do the reverse uh, order that is uh, uh, converting or transforming this uh, current source into a voltage source, uh, if the current is uh, directed towards A or terminal A, we need to write the voltage on the transform circuit the, uh, such that the positive polarity or the positive terminal is directed towards A or terminal A. Let's have an example of source transformation. 
here in this problem, we're asked to um, solve for the current I sub x to the capacitor minus J2. To apply source transformation, we need to examine the circuit for a voltage that is in series with an impedance or a current source that is in parallel with an impedance. So here we notice that this is a voltage source and this is in series with this impedance. So we can uh, put these two elements together. So the impedance there is two plus J4. So this part of the circuit here can be transformed into a current source. Also, we have a current source that is uh, in parallel with this impedance here. So therefore, we can transform this part of the circuit into a voltage source. So let's do that. Uh, so we separate those parts of the circuit that we would like to transform. So we transform this uh, part here into a current source. So it becomes like this. And this part here, it becomes like this. So we compute the current here as uh, the quotient of uh, the source divided by the impedance 2 plus J4. While here, we compute for the voltage as the product of this uh, current source and the impedance to which it is in parallel. So here is our new circuit, transform circuit. And uh, before we proceed, I have to remind uh, that uh, in doing the simplification, we need to maintain our variables. So the variables or the parameters that we need to compute such that it won't uh, um, disappear on the circuit. Otherwise, uh, we would not be able to, or we would ha have a hard time computing for it. So here we're able to maintain that variable. It is still there. Now in this new circuit, we notice that we have, again, a current source that is in parallel with a, an impedance. So we could, uh, again, convert this part of the circuit but before doing that, we notice that this impedance is in parallel with 6 ohms. So we might as well uh, combine them before we do the transformation. So uh, we could do that. Uh, but uh, before doing that, uh, we also notice that we could combine these impedances as well. Okay. So uh, let's do the transformation for the current source. And we will get this one. So this is the voltage source. This is the impedance. This is uh, the combination of these uh, three impedance or three elements. Now notice that we didn't uh, anymore convert this uh, part of the circuit because notice that we also have a voltage source that is in series with an impedance. So that is a candidate as well for the uh, current transformation. But there is really no need to do that because after transforming the current source, what we get is a circuit that only has one loop. Performing a transformation on the voltage source will create additional loops that uh, again uh, will defeat our purpose for reducing the number of loops. So therefore, uh, this would be our final circuit. Notice that I sub x is still there. And 
we recognize also that uh, this i sub x is actually flowing all the way through there. So this is i sub x. And we can now apply a Kirchhoff's voltage law. So doing that, we get this equation. Okay. Um, so let's uh, review it step by step. So starting from the voltage source on the left, we have negative, uh, so a negative 36 minus J18 plus because the polarity here is a plus, minus, here is a plus, minus, and Taking them all together, we have a plus. So we add all the impedances times the current that passes through those impedances, so which is i sub x. Then plus, because this is a plus here, this voltage. <coughs> and equals to zero. So solving for i sub x, that should give us this answer thank you